Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to brighter shores, shall we? So we just picked up an amazing fishing spear, and let's go ahead and use this to catch some stuff. Now I'm going to push M to go to the map. Now I want to catch these eel eventually for cooking, but they're level 2. And you can see our fishing skill is level zero. So we're not going to be able to actually go get them until we raise up from level zero. So let's go get some kelp. We need that anyway. And some flounder here, which is a level zero fish. Also, a ton of map left to explore. Now I'm going to use the map. Speaking of the map, I'm actually going to... Oops, I'm going in the wrong direction. And let's go this way. Now, from the waterfront, uh, I might want to just go over here really quickly and, and just see what's here. Maybe there's other places to get, you know, fish that would be the appropriate level. This is the boardwalk. There is a herring. Here is Turner Round. Now, we don't need this person for now. They don't have a bubble or a quest icon or anything like that. But you notice the purple outline on them. That means that eventually we're going to need... To be able to talk to them but the great thing about the game remember is that as, let's just show you moving on to this um we can see as we move uh you know into this zone here if we come back there is the purple icon for that npc and let's see anything on this map that we want to get oyster okay and what's this thing scrap metal bin very good we already got the rogue It's the Vacant Pier, and there's some Dab, which is a fish that we can catch, but we need a pole, as you can see, and we need to be skill 20, which we are not. There's somebody loading crates over here, and we found Limpet Lane. Now, on Limpet Lane, we see um, a level 22 thief, and we are kind of moving back into the area right here that we've already been. Um, and at the little square. And then here we found Nook Alley, which has a scrap metal bin. So, we could stay here. Oh, and actually, look at this. There's a regular thief that wants to fight us. So let's go. They've engaged us. And, you know, you can see in these alleys, um, there are a range of thieves that will spawn and the bigger ones... Oh, okay, well, apparently I was able to walk away from that without using escape. Um, interesting. I had cued that... Um, I, I had cued that movement, and getting aggroed there did not stop that from happening. So we were able to slip out of that. It... That area will spawn uh, thieves that are appropriate... You know, to your level, and the big ones won't attack us. Now, we could talk to Turner, and we could say, why are you sitting in the rain? The rain reminds me of the splash of the sea spray as I stand at the prow on a choppy sea. I'd prefer actually being out at sea, but no one is sailing at the moment. I enjoy looking out to sea, but I'd prefer actually being out at sea. All right, so I think we understand what this guy wants, um, and it's to never be at sea. Okay, so let's go this way, and... You can see there is an NPC here, too, which is Bartram Stone. Now, we don't need them now, but it's worth just kind of making note of where those NPCs are. I'm going to zoom out because you'll know eventually they may come up in a quest. And once we get to this screen, go ahead and get all the kelp you can. raise up our skill this will help us not only raise our foraging but make potions and you want to be as efficient as you can I mean there's unlimited time in this game so you don't really have to stress about it but while you're here you might as well and then let's start catching some mottled flounder here we go we're gonna jump in the water and we're gonna use our spear boom we got the first one and we get that big boost because that's our first flounder we filled in our profession catalog and let's get some more
So if you want, you can kind of time this where you can watch the animation and you can watch me filling this up. And as soon as I see the, the experience awarded and the progress wheel is done, you could click on your next target um, to kind of start almost queuing that up. And we got level one. Now we need to get level two to uh, be able to get eel. I'm going to open my inventory. You can see all of these flounder that we are stacking up here. Now, also, let me, um, the flounder, you know, spawn pretty quickly. The brown kelp has also reset. To optimize, what you want to do is kind of like, as soon as the cooldown on the kelp comes, then go get it, and then come back to the fish, and it'll let way more fish spawn so you can go quickly get the fish. And you're just double dipping here and doing uh, both at once. And we have enough space to do this. And then now you see when I go to Flounder, instead of just like waiting for one and one to pop, I've let them all pop. And this is not a competitive spot. They've limited the number of people. I'm not competing with these people for things. It's a great way to make this um, where I can see other players and I can, you know, I can chat with them if I want to turn that on and get that social dynamic. But I'm also not like stressed out that like, oh no, they're going to take all the fish. No. We're all just having fun here. And that's level two, baby. It's time for some eels. I'm going to get this last one. Now I'm going to show you something. Um, I don't know if... Okay, so now we can catch the lesser eel. And we haven't gone to this other beach screen yet. But here, there should be... Um, let's go ahead and explore. There's a rock pool. Um, get everything here. There's a shell... There's um, Placid Bass, and no more question marks on the map. Go over one more. And there's more kelp. And there's starfish. And there's jellyfish. And I'm going to go ahead and get this um, kelp. So this is another spot to get kelp for leveling up your foraging when you're low. And we got two. Excuse me, everyone. All right, we got level two foragers. So now we can get the snippers and cut these creamy wall plants. And it reminds me, like I said, I've played MMOs throughout the years and I remember back in World of Warcraft where, like, you would be trying to level up your mining or something, and you would see a node on your map, and you'd run to it, and you'd get there. And then just as you were about to get there, you'd see some other player, like, fly up and take it, and you'd be so sad. But this game, um, and I think most games since that point, um, oop, great, we're full on backpack space. By the way, I was told by another uh, friend in the Let's Play, just giving so much great advice about the game. Um, there are players who are uh, far fur further into the game than I am. And eventually, when you're an incredibly high skill level after a lot of grinding um, at a profession that we haven't even unlocked yet, there is a way to access some of the banks um, remotely so that you can you know, even deal with bag space in a more convenient way. As far as I understand it, I haven't seen it myself, but it's really exciting uh, that that's a possibility. And let's see. Now, um, I actually, let me go back here. I could have just teleported back, but the reason I didn't is I want to talk to the fishmonger. I'm going to show you the flounder in my bag. So what's the info on the flounder? It's a surprisingly, it's surprisingly flat for a fish, and it says right now that the only thing we can really do with it is sell it. And so let's do that. Let's sell it to the fishmonger and we're going to say sell and the flounder you see how in parentheses next to the name flounder there is no application so what that means is it's not used for any crafting that we know about at all or even that we could get and this is only for selling so i'm actually just going to click the sell all button and we're going to get a nice two silver for that little fishing that we did now i'm going to start catching some eels because it's on the way. And they're right here. 
and we get that huge boost for our first eel, the wonderful sound effect. Like somebody is, um, fell onto a xylophone, it's great. And now we're level 3 fishermen already. I'm going to get all of these eels because these eels are something that we want for leveling up our uh, cooking after we're done with bacon sandwiches. And even if we can't use them right now, we can store them in the kitchen for later. Now I could stay here and wait for the eels to repop, but I've got things to do. We'll come back. Now, one of the things I could do, let me see my inventory, is, uh, yeah, we're going to go right here and we're going to prepare all of our kelp. What was that noise you say? It's that pressure cooker back there, just blowing off steam. Now, you can see that unlike cooking, you know, this is giving us, at both steps of the process, it's giving us a little experience. Snoozy is blowing something up back there. All right. Now, let's go back here and make all of these into a potion. And whoops, what are we missing? So the game will tell you we've got level zero alchemist. Check. We've got the preparation for 10% healing that we made from the kelp, but we don't have any bottles. So we just kind of run back here and we're just going to talk to Ebsworth and buy some bottles. So I'm going to actually just buy 10. And then... Uh, immediately, I'm going to go over here and make as many as I can. Let's go. Sizzle, sizzle. Now, you could sell these potions for a decent amount of, um, of money at the early game. Um, but it's also really nice to just have these for emergencies. However, I don't think that carrying, you know, more than five or ten of these is necessary. Because um, you can't use that many. You don't need to use that many. And we're going to be leveling up to a better potion at some point anyway. So if the money will help us now. So, if you want to keep a stack of like 10, that's fine. I think I'm just going to keep 5 for now. I need to get more kelp anyway. But you see how we're punching up. And, you know, we're not going to get level 3, but we're really close. Awesome. So the next little round of potions that we get, um, you can see we can already make the 20% healing potion. And if you want to know what that takes, you can come oops, um, down here. Here we go to the book. We can see in healing, just click on this, and we need kelp, but we also need the creamy wall plant. So kelp we can use for the next potion, but we have to augment it with this wall plant. And that's going to be more difficult to get because we have to buy the snippers, and the snippers cost money, and they cost more than we have by a good amount. So... Um, that's sad. Now, what level is our cooking, actually? Our cooking is one. So let's go to Kevin. And what I'm going to do is say, show me your produce. And what we're going to do is, I'll buy... Um, five? Let's see how much five and five does. By the way... I closed out, but you can just go back, um, which is easier for staying on his screen. I'm going to deposit all these eel, too. We need gelatin uh, with the eel, but that's not a concern at the moment. 
I'll just show you how to do this. So we're going to go to the ingredients bank. Now this ingredients bank, it took me a second to kind of interpret this, but basically look at the cards. So the top icon is your backpack, how many bread you have in your backpack, and the bottom icon is this cabinet. So if I want to put something in here, like these eel right here, I'm going to click on them, and then it goes to another screen, which is withdraw or deposit. Remember, I have six in backpack, zero in here. I'm just going to put all of them in here, and now this has dynamically updated zero in backpack, six in cabinet, and that's all I wanted to do. So I'm going to go here, and we're going to fry this bacon. Oh, God, it smells good. I'm getting hungry. All right, and then we're going to go back here and make the sandwich. Click on the bread or the bacon. And we'd like to hit level two, if possible, but we might need a bit more um, bacon sandwiches. I didn't want to buy 10 because I didn't want to have a bunch of extra. As soon as I can graduate um, to the better dish, I should. However, we are still making a profit, so... It's not the end of the world. There we go. All right, so let us then move over here. And talk to our man. And let's just do five and five again. It's easy. And this will get us up to it the next level and then we can make eel the deep fryer you've got to be incredibly skilled to use that deep fryer otherwise you'll burn the place down don't just drop that frozen turkey in there my god man There we go. There we go. I can sense it. It smells like a bacon sandwich, that level two cooking. Amazing. Okay, so now we can make jellied eels. Not the greatest jelly deals, indeed. Um, now, you see how it actually sells for less than the bacon sandwich? But that's because if we can procure the ingredients, the eels, then we can make more money. Now, we have to buy gelatin. So let's go ahead and get rid of these sandwiches. Now, you can see we're actually just making okay money here. Now, this man, um, Kevin, will sell us gelatin now. So this was not there because it was a future item. You can see that if you unlock future items, he's got a ton of stuff to sell. But now that we are high enough level, this appears. Now, I'm just going to buy... Um, I think I have six eels, so I'm going to buy five and one. And just process all the eels that I have. Now, remember that the eels that are in our ingredient bank must be withdrawn before we can use them. And we need to go get them out of here. Open the ingredient bank. And I'm going to take the eels out. And then now you need to actually go to the boiling pot for the eels. And you can use the gelatin or the eels, whichever. They go together. And we're going to boil it. Mmm... Now, you'll notice I'm not getting experience, and that's because this is still a two-step process. For this baby to set and be delicious, we gotta freeze it up. So after we're done boiling it, we need to use the ice box. Now, all of this information can be found in the recipe book, or um, I believe if we just click on the item in our inventory once we're done here. 
No, 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 it doesn't tell you what you what you should do um, next. So you'd have to look at the... Uh, let's see, does your profession tell you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not yet. So, if you wanted to know exactly, then you would need to say, okay, check out the recipe book. Jellied eels, and it tells you over here. Boil it, and then icebox. Okay. So I was wondering if you could get those instructions in multiple ways, but at least so far it looks like you need to check the recipe book. Now we just put it in there, and we get the card, and now we're level 3 cooking, just like that. All right, fantastic. We're almost level four cooking, to be honest. And then let's just sell our eels to the chef. Remember, there's nothing that we can do with this, so we're just going to sell it. And we make three silver right there, so we're up to basically 11 silver, which is a lot. And it's getting closer to what we need for the snippers. And let's go check that. So um, if we want the secateurs, we need to go here to the forager's warehouse but i want to go here anyway because i want to show you if you recall binzi told us that we could check in with the captain on the wall uh to see if he needs any help and that uh will let us get a great quest by the way there's a creamy wall plant right there so we could check and just see how expensive this is and we could say hey ella Welcome to the Forager's Warehouse. Can I interest you in some foraging equipment? Yes, please. So these right here is what we could use, but it costs 13 silver, so quite costly. Um, but that's pretty easy to make. For example, I could just go here and, you know, fight a death crow. If this gets close, if we aren't beating this death crow, we have our potion. We are hitting a bird that's on the ground with a club. It's pretty amazing. I mean, it's it's courteous. There we go. Um, we got a we upgraded. We got level seven guard first of all, and look at this. We got an even better. If I equip this, we upgraded our weapon. It's the same spiky club guy, but it's um a kind of epic item instead of a rare. So yeah, give us the new one, and we could sell the old one, which is tremendous. And let's fight this guy. So we're talking about making money. This is another way to make money, and we need to raise our guard experience anyway. I'm not going to do this too much, but the beautiful thing about the game is if you ever want to just kind of vibe out and get some money, just skill up. Just go gather a bunch of stuff. Go fishing for a long time. Sell all your stuff. You'll have a bunch of money and you'll raise your skill. Alright, the game is... I'm not going to use the word trolling us, but um, if you... Uh, it's random, but if you look at our paper doll, we need pants, we need armor, we need a hat, um, and we aren't getting that. We're getting gloves, and we're getting shoes and weapons. That's okay, though. So, this is another Death Crow. And let's fight this thing. Oh no, it's the same. Never mind. Let's not fight this thing. Um, we know them too well. Uh, anything else on this to explore? No. Now, up here is where we want to go. So, I'm actually gonna, just going to click over here, come around this corner, and we need to go up on top. We need to find a staircase. So, let's go over here. And there's some goblins here. They will probably fight us. Um, these are goblin, um, now this irritable goblin chief is actually, um, very hard for us. So we might not make it. I'm going to drink a potion and just get a little bit of healing on. Okay, great. So what I said before was wrong. Um, I apologize. You can use more than one. I must have only had one in the stack. 
There we go. Oh my gosh. The cannibo. It's all we're getting. Okay, fine. Alright, let's run over here. And you see how he has this scroll with the exclamation point? That means Commander Hackett has a quest. Let's go talk to him. Good day, recruit. Um... Corporal Bin said you needed a hand over here. He's not wrong. Constant goblin incursions are wearing down our men and equipment. I'll give you a new sword to help fight. We just received this shipment. The key arrived separately for security reasons. I've got a man fetching it now. Commander, here's the key. Oh my god, look out behind you. Yoink, the goblin thief took it. You little blighter. Quick, catch that goblin. Alright, we gotta catch the goblin. Run this way. Here he is, right here. Hit him with your Kanabo. Now this guy is saucy, so we might need to use some potions. What you want to do is drink the potion as soon as you can. Well, now the potion's disappeared. And we just survived that. But we got level 8 guard and the key. Heck yeah. Well, now I gotta tell you I rightly don't know. I, I hadn't seen it let me use two potions before. Uh, maybe there's just a... I don't know why that battle only let me use it one time. And the previous battle let me show the cooldown where I could have used it multiple times. Maybe what I did was I canceled my... No, I used it. Anyway. If anybody can clarify the business of how many potions you can use in combat, that would be great. Because I thought it was just one. And then I saw that maybe it was more than one. And then maybe it depends. Get that key back. The goblin thief ran south from here. I have it here. Hand it over then. Alright, so you have to... Um, you see how this isn't working? It's because I have single click enabled. So now you have to right click him and then say use item on and use the quest item. So if you go to um, left click as single click, it's going to do the default action, which is talk. But if you need to do another action like use item on, then you want to right click to bring up the action menu so you can do this. Wait, these swords haven't been tuned yet. Tuned? What does that mean? Have you seen the big obelisk near Branoff Boulevard yet? No, I've not been that way. Much of the armor and weaponry in the world of Adothria has been tuned at magic obelisks to be powerful within the vicinity of those obelisks. Thus, any armor or weapon which hasn't been tuned to the local obelisk is comparatively very weak. These swords need to be tuned to be strong in Hopeport. All right, so we got to take him to the obelisk. So we have not yet found the obelisk, and we're going to need to kind of fill in the map to see if we can locate that. So I'm going to push M, close the map, push Q to bring up the quest. And you can see right here, um, the obelisk quest is this. And luckily, it, it requires a lot of items, as you can see, all these hexes. Um, and it's saying you can't find it with because we haven't located that in the map, so we need to do that. But it's only one star ranking, which means this is an appropriate quest for our level. Now, I'm just going to click down here. I will cut through the goblins' area to do this. But that's okay. Someone wants to fight us, fine. I'm going to stay here and fight them. He's got that flag on the back. I just can't allow him to uh, rep the flag so hard. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you something. I think I figured it out, by the way. Things are changing rapidly in this game because it's in early access. But what happened was the... 
it's not that you can't use multiple potions in combat. You can. It's just that for whatever reason, when I crafted this potion, which was the same as the previous potion, it sent it to my inventory and did not automatically equip it. So I had this big stack in my inventory that I needed to equip. So just be aware that if you make potions, even if they match a type that you have um, equipped right here on your weapon screen, it they go to your inventory and not here, and you need to equip them separately to stack them up. So you can use potions multiple times in combat. They do have a cooldown. But what what I was experiencing is that I had made I had separate stacks because they weren't adding up. I think maybe they'll they'll change that functionality at some point so that they automatically equip if you already have the stack there, but maybe not. So just be aware of that. And also, I'm just gonna be perfectly honest with you. The reason I'm not too sure about potion mechanics is because I almost never use them. Um, I basically don't pick fights that are uh, I think are gonna be too difficult. And I have been uh, just doing other skilling stuff and haven't had to use more than one potion in a fight, if any potions. I rarely use them. So that explains everything. Okay. There we go. Oh, well, he dropped a shell for us, which is a foraging item. That's actually pretty nice. We can use that. What do we use it for? It's, um, potion experience. It's a potion reagent, so we can go put that in the chest if we want. And we killed that guy. Let's get out of here. Sweet. So now we need to go explore to complete this quest, and we have been doing a great job of boosting our professions. We raised our fishing and our cooking to three, our foraging to two, our guard up to eight, and we started a new quest. Everyone, I hope you're still finding this series to be useful and fun. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.